Now, all of these easements, like Sarah had asked, are created mutually, meaning both parties agree. Or in the particular example that I just showed you, A may have owned both parties, so he agreed with himself. But it's still a voluntary process. There are a couple of easements that are not voluntary and are forced upon people. The first one, let's assume that this farmer owns the 100 acre wood. Who lives in the 100 acre woods? Winnie the Pooh. Maybe it's too old for you, some of you guys. Winnie the Pooh lives in the 100 acre woods. All right. But suppose this farmer owns this 100 acre woods and he decides he wants to sell that 10 acres right there. Possession is one of the rights. How does that guy that just bought that 10 acres out of the middle possess that property without trespassing over the farmer's land based upon the drawing that I've got on the board? He can't. So what would happen is they would actually force an easement to be created called an easement by necessity. An easement by necessity. It would be forced in place upon the farmer so that the new owner of that inner property could actually gain access. So that's the book work. I'm here to tell you in the real world what would probably happen. The title company wouldn't close this. They would force the farmer to go out and voluntarily do it. But for the process of the book and the purpose, you need to understand that an easement by necessity is one that's put in place, maybe not voluntarily by both parties. It is just created. So every morning this guy gets in this car, or let's do a motorcycle today. That looks more like an alligator. I don't have a slightest idea. He goes out, down, around the corner, up the corner, and back out to the highway. And he wakes up one day and he says, man, this is stupid. I'm gonna sneak out the back door drive across the farmer's land and go right straight to the highway that way. If he does this under this prescribed method, he could create what's called an easement by prescription or a prescriptive easement. And the way to remember that is exactly what I just said. He has to follow a prescribed method to do this. And there are five requirements that must happen for that prescriptive easement. All right. It has to be open, meaning he does it openly. He doesn't like only do it in the dark and no one can see it. It has to be notorious. Everybody knows it's him that's doing it, and that's not spelled correctly. It has to be hostile, meaning it's without the permission of the farmer. If the farmer said, hey man, go ahead, I'm not flying on that yard anyway, you can go ahead and drive on it, it's no longer hostile. So hostile means it's without due permission with the owner. It has to be continuous and uninterrupted. Continuous is defined differently in every state. In Indiana, I believe it is nine years. Could be seven, I don't know. Has to be continuously done for nine years. It also has to be uninterrupted, which means this nine years can be created by multiple people through the ownership, all right? So what I'm saying is, suppose Jamon lives there and he's driving out that, that's him doing that. And he does it for four years. He then, I buy the property from him and at the closing he says, hey, look, man, I've been driving out that back part, saves me 20 minutes, go ahead and do it. And then I do it 
for five more years, his four plus my five would make nine. We can tack them together. The term is called tacking. Think of a thumbtack. I can tack my five years on the back of his four to get the nine. What uninterrupted means is that it has to be uninterrupted. Jamonson sells it to me and says, hey, I've been doing it for four years. I own the property and I'm like, hey, I'm a little scared to do it, so I don't do it. And then I sell it to Sarah. She cannot add her five years because I interrupted the process. She would have to start all over again because the first five years are now canceled because I chickened out and didn't do it. Now, he did it for three years, I did it for three years, and you did it for three years. Tack, 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 that's nine years. That could work, but I can't skip. It can't be interrupted. That activity can't be interrupted. So it's called packing there on page 40. Um, the fifth one is adverse to the true owner's possession. Meaning he can't be doing it while the owner's doing it too. That would just be him doing it with the owner. Both of those last two, the prescriptive easement and the easement by necessity were not voluntarily created. If the guy does it for nine years, he could create an appurtenant easement. Get what I'm saying? While he's doing it, it's a prescriptive easement. But once he goes to court and says, hey, I want this made into an easement because I've been following these rules, the prescribed method, it could turn into an appurtenant easement, which means what? The public can now use it. So it would eventually become a public easement if all of those prescribed methods were followed. Now, when you terminate an easement, they can be terminated. There are several reasons why they can be terminated. But hear the words coming out of my mouth. I know there is a question on the exam. To terminate an easement requires an action. It doesn't automatically happen in any of these cases. You have to seek out the termination. If both parties become one owner. If A in our picture decides to buy B's property and reclaim his five acres back into 10, that easement doesn't necessarily go away. It would have to be actively disbanded. If B decides to go ahead and draw, clear their woods out and make a true driveway, that easement would still be there. They would have to use it or they would have to vacate it and actively go and say, we want to terminate this. So if the use is no longer needed, if it gets abandoned, if B releases the uh, easement, the key to this termination is it is actively terminated, not automatically. Now, there is a term called a license. A license, for lack of a better word, is a watered-down version of an easement. It's created by adjoining properties <clears throat> and think of it as a good neighborly kind of thing to do. Shauna and I live beside each other. We're good friends. She needs to turn around in my yard because her driveway is small and she's got a big old stack. 
stretch Hummer. I say, yeah, go ahead. You can drive on my property to get back out. That would be a license. It is not recorded. It's not legally defined. It's a granting of the use orally between neighbors. A license is terminated in one of three ways. I can literally withdraw it anytime I want. Sean and I get in a big argument and I tell her, hey, your Chicago Bears suck, Colts are better, quit using my land. I don't even have to reason, I just say, get off my property, can't use it anymore. So it can be terminated at will. It would also be terminated if she moves or I move, just because I let her doesn't mean I might let her neighbor. And conversely, just because I let her use my property doesn't mean the new owner would let her use her property. Or upon the death of either one of us, which makes sense because there would be a new owner again. So upon death, at will, or uh, upon the sale of the property. So a license is nothing more than a watered down version of an easement. It's a good old boy handshake kind of agreement that I'm gonna let you use my property and you can let me use mine. Now, an encroachment is a physical entity on your property. So here's the property line. And your neighbor built a shed out in the corner to store stuff. <clears throat> and he missed and put some of it over on your property. So what you do is go, e after all, it's your property. Now he's got the whole back opening of the shed to drive the tractor out of, by the way. Um, so an encroachment is a physical entity on your property. Another version of this that you see, and let's say here's a property line, somebody has a tree and the tree branches out onto your land. You own the airspace. They are encroaching upon your airspace. I like to sun myself out in my bikini briefs. Try getting that vision out of your head later. And your tree is blocking my sun. <laughs> That's S-U-N. So I literally go in and go, okay. Get out my chainsaw. And you come home and that's what your tree looks like now. It is a physical entity on my property. It is an encroachment that reduces my right or my uh, possession of the property. All right, thumbs up. Cameron, you okay today, bud? Tired? Okay. Well, hang in this. We're getting close. We're getting close. I feel like I'm blowing through this really quick. So if you've got questions, feel free to email me, hit the chat button, just blurt it out or whatever. Text me later, smoke signal, carrier pigeon, whatever you want to do if you've got questions about this. Now, on page 42, there is another term called a Liz Pendens. Liz Pendens is Latin and it means litigation pending. Litigation pending. This is the precursor to a lawsuit. I may want to sue you. I haven't decided yet but I certainly don't want you to find out about it and start selling off all of your toys. So I call my attorney and go, hey man, I think blah, 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 hit my English bulldog and killed him. I wanna sue for $10,000, but I'm not really sure yet. 
can you file a Liz pendant against this person? So they would literally go down and file on everything they can find of yours, your boat, your airplane, your motorcycle, your two cars, your house, your uh, resort property in Hawaii, whatever you own, so that if you tried to sell it, the title company would go, uh, we cannot transfer this property because there is a potential lawsuit against you. And remember that, that correlation you have to make there is the lawsuit could make that property my property if I win the lawsuit. That's why I can't let you get rid of it. So it's a Liz Pendens. We actually have this going on right now in the real world. All right. We've got a client who was trying to refinance his house and he cannot refinance. Now, what you don't know is that refinance is defined as a legal sale with a repurchase by the same owner. Everybody says, oh, I refinanced my house. Legally, they sold the house to themselves. So they paid off that lien, got a new one at a better interest rate or whatever. So he's trying to refinance this house, but his tenant apparently got into a big argument with his tenant's friend and shot him. Didn't kill him, just pissed him off, all right? You guys see Blazing Saddles in the one scene when he goes out to get the gun against Mongo? The guy goes, oh, no, 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 don't take your gun. You shoot him, you're just going to make him mad. <laughs> All right? So he shot his buddy, apparently. Didn't kill him. So now his buddy is suing the guy that shot him. But the buddy's attorney named our client, the owner of the property, and the client actually has a Liz Pendens on their house. So it is blocking the refinance because it's a sale and the partner in the mortgage company with me he's like is there any way we can get around this i'm like no because it's doing exactly what it's designed to do it is causing harm or pain to our client to the point of our client may end up paying off the settlement just so he can do the refinance that's what it's intended to do. If I place a Liz Pendens against the guy that hit my dog, and all of a sudden he can't refinance and get this benefit of this really low interest rate, what I want him to do is go, damn, 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 okay, I'll give you the money just so I remove it. Okay, that's what I wanted him to do. So a Liz Pendens gets recorded, and it's a future interest in lawsuit, or future interest in property, but it's a reduction of your disposition right because it has added another encumbrance to your property all right so all of these things that we've talked about are non-monetary encumbrances they are called an encumbrance we're going to do a whole chapter on liens which are monetary encumbrances coming up now i know that this streaming thing is kind of new for both of us and it seems like we are going really fast. So I want to make sure that we're all thumbs up and happy right now, that we get what's going on, all right? Because now we're back to page 42 in dealing with the governmental powers, which is how we started. So in essence, ta-da! Any questions on anything that we have covered so far in the first three chapters? First two are a lot of definitions, getting to understand some terminology. This one gets confusing because it deals with the estate in land. And we also deal with some other interests in land, <clears throat> but are not ownership. So they're not really an estate. Everybody understand? You guys, my mom's old saying favorite saying was she used to tell me when i was trying to teach me stuff all cardinals are birds but not all birds are cardinals so that's what we're talking about here 
not all interests are in a state. An estate is a degree of ownership. But an easement is an interest in property, but it's not really ownership of the property. So an interest is not an estate. <clears throat> it's an interest in it, not ownership. All right. Cameron, question. For a list pendants, does it ever expire? I would say yes, it probably does. That's a damn good question though, Cameron, because I'm wondering if in that example that I'm talking about, I'm gonna to have to call Colin, my partner, and find that out. Um, because I know that it has been on his property for about three years because they keep kicking the can of the court case down the street. One party asks for an extension, the other party asks for an extension, yada, yada, yada. In the meantime, the owner of the pro uh, property, our client is the one that's suffering because he can't refinance. I need to look into that. That's actually a really good question. Will this Liz pendants ever expire? My initial knee-jerk reaction would be yes. Uh, mechanics liens expire, but they can be renewed. So I'm wondering if it probably has a date at which it goes stale, but because there's really no cost to doing it, I wonder if they can just renew it. I will look that up for you and get an answer, but that's a that's a good question that I've never even really thought about or, or, or considered. So I'll check that out and let you know, sir. All right, thank you. All right, anybody else? At this point, let me take the opportunity to say farewell. All right, so if there's no other questions, three, two, one.